Okay, this is my first official unboxing. Um, I got this package in from Hong Kong, if you guys can see that. I'm not sure if that camera's going to focus too well. It is a Nikon. Now, I have already opened the box to make sure it is the one that I wanted to unbox, and I have. So here it is. Today I'm unboxing the Tatankia, or whatever it is, the Tatania. 11 by... Uh, I can't remember what it was. 11 by something, 11 by 16 I think it was. Um, lens for... Uh, the... Nikon cameras. That's a super wide angle lens. And it's extremely well packed from this supplier, this eBay supplier. Um, it's suggested to get this. Oh god, it doesn't want to come out. Jeez, how much wrapping did they use? I must write back to them and thank them for this, but it does make the um, unboxing a little bit difficult. Alright, let's just unroll it. And, oh, just done a casey nice that. Here we go. Let's fix up that camera again. Oh, they gave me a full cleaning kit with it. I did forget about that little bonus. So we've got a uh, lens cleaner. Thank you. We've got the camera cleaner. Not a bad one either, actually, I don't think. Should get a little bit of air out of that one. Now, this is the Tikina. DX1116 f2.8 a spherical lens. Um, I got this one because I've already got, as you're looking through here, the um, the 18 to 200 uh, f4.3.5 uh, Nikon lens, and I find it's just not wide enough for the um, the kind of uh, landscape photography I'd want to do. So I thought I'd. Rather than go up to the 11 to 24 mil Nikon lens, which costs, I think it was about $1,800, I went and researched this one. It got a, quite a lot of good reviews as a cheap, I mean, it's not cheap, it's still a $600 lens. Packed seemingly well. Okay, opening it up. As a cheaper alternative for. wide-angle uh, photography. Now, it, it's quite quite heavy, actually. Um, feels like it's got some good manufacturing in it. They definitely haven't wasted anything there. Now, what attracted me to this was the, um, the autofocus. It's just a ring pull. Um, it rolls really well. It does have full stops at each end. It doesn't just keep rolling around like the others do. There's your 11 to 16. All that feels really nice and firm to turn. The lens cap is a 72mm, so it will fit all my filters off that camera there that you are watching on. Oh, can't get that off, but I don't want to break it. It should just be a quick... Ah, ah, no, it doesn't want to come off. I'll do that off, off screen in case I do break it, but... Quite interested to um, get this on the camera and see what uh, kind of photos, or the difference in the 16... And the 18R, I'm sure it'll be quite a lot. And then obviously back down to the 11. So interesting times for this camera. I can't believe how weighty it is. This is going to feel really nice on the camera, on the Nikon. I've got a D7500. So it's got plenty of... Plenty of uh, megapixels to get some good stuff out of this, I hope. So, can't wait. Let's have a look. I don't know if I've got enough room in here, but anyway. So this is the D7500. Um, with the, let me just get rid of this mic now that I'm not recording with it. Which is obviously the Rode Micro. Just put that out of the way. Don't go, so you can see the, um, the sizes of the screens are the same. I don't have my lens cap out here, but yes, I do. So I'll just put this one away nicely. 
without damaging it, of course, because lenses are life, aren't they? We'll unbox it. Oh, the camera's on. Tatanka. Oh, washi. So when we put it on, does it have a good click? Oh yeah, it definitely feels like it's in there really nicely. Now, let's turn it on and see what focal lengths we have. Oh, wow, that's, that is really wide. And bring it into 16. Barely any difference, but you definitely notice that when you're shooting um, your landscape photography. The, um, the autofocus on it's pretty quick as well, actually. So let me get rid of that so he's gonna have a proper look. Still nice and noisy, like all the rest of the Nikon lenses, of course. I mean, if you can listen to it. It's just the way that um, Nikon like to make everything bloody loud. Yeah, that is really easy to manually focus too. So that's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, bonus for shooting video. I'll go and take some photos. I'll put them up and um, let us know what you think. If you any questions, I'll try and answer them as best as I can with it. Thank you. Okay, so first impressions with it is it's definitely a wide angle lens um, there's no doubting that you can um, definitely tell um, in some of the shots that I've taken outside where the distortion of the horizon is quite off or objects are quite stretched um, when close up this is definitely a great landscape um, lens but you would definitely get a lot of distortion on people's faces or in the shapes of their heads and stuff like that. Um, if I could try and example it here, it's getting smaller. Get out of the way, light. You can see how it's getting smaller, but then it gets very tall as you move down. That is something you would definitely have to watch. Um, I might record a little bit of video of that while I've got it on there. Turn up dice a little bit, do a little bit of focus on it. And I'll hold the focus, otherwise it will be horribly distorted. And I record just going up. And we can watch how small it goes. Round and up. Yeah, so that's something you'll definitely have to watch. You definitely have to keep your horizon um, nice and even in the middle of the shot, unless you are um, going for a particular different look. But um, yeah, first impressions, I like the lens. Um, I can't wait to get it out into the wild and um, get some really good shooting going and um, give it a real good road test. And I'll give you an update on that once I do it. Thank you. If you like this channel, and any of the other videos on it, please like and subscribe.